Sports Team Podcast is brought to you by Sports Interaction, your homegrown sports book. And let's talk personal for a second. They're the first brand that recognized Gate 14. They're the first brand that jumped on the ship that Gate 14 is. So make sure you download Sports Interaction today. Support the Gate 14 boys. Bet the Gate 14 parlays every single week. We're there for live streams every Tuesday. Now let's kick it to the podcast. All right. Uh, we are back. Uh, we talked to you guys three days ago. I don't know if we were that optimistic when we talked to you guys three days ago, but I want to make this clear. Fuck Dome from home. I'm out on Dome from home. I'm out on it, Avery. Bad luck. 0-3 in <laughs> Dome from home. And I am shocked that today's a Dome from home game because you got an off day tomorrow. You're only going to Washington. You take rest away from your players. I, I think today's Dome from home was dumb. I think. It was dumb. It was, you can't, you can't rush greatness and you can't push greatness. And that is what they did today. They rushed home from home. Now the Jays are going to not play for over 48 hours now, right? Avery, pretty much. They're not playing until seven o'clock Friday. Yeah. 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 So it's like, I I don't know where I'm at with that. I I might be out on it. They got to at least cancel it. I know there's going to be a million more dome from homes and the record's not looking great for the Toronto Blue Jays so far, but all seriousness, man, Avery, how are you feeling, man? Um, how, where are you at right now? I was rock bottom on the weekend. <laughs> and I just don't think I'm there anymore. I'm not there. I think I realize, I hate, I always hate when I say this. Dude, we have five more months left of baseball, and we're two games under 500. What yeah. was it, two years ago where this team struggled to, like, was at 500 until they fired Charlie Montoyo? And they made the playoffs. Exactly. So I hate how it has started. You face some really good teams. Hasn't gone our way. It's been tough sledding. The yeah. numbers look horrible. People are ready to blow it up. We're a month into the season. I'm no longer in. This is the worst shit I've ever watched, even though the last two games could be up there in the worst shit I've ever watched. Well, yeah, yeah. No, like our crowd and Blue Jays fans are very reactionary and rightfully so I guess I, I mean think every ba- like every baseball fan is yeah reactionary. yeah and, and this is where I'm at with this like I'm gonna speak for the voice at reasoning for the people that are very angry right now uh we watch this every day uh and we watched it every day last year I know albeit they made the playoffs last year but they waddled their way into the playoffs. Like they went in ass backwards into the playoffs. It was a tough brand of baseball to watch to make the playoffs with. Um, but my God, has this been, I'm currently speaking of right now, has this been horrific to watch? Like the, the at bats, when the other team scores two or three runs, you're like, uh oh, this shit might be over, folks. It's, uh, it's a it's a depressing brand of baseball, and that, there's nothing wrong with saying that. Yeah, uh, I think the t- thing that will always get fans down is how your team hits with runners in scoring position. It's you seem like you have a chance, a runner on second, runner second third, and it's, if you don't score those guys, it is debilitating. It's debilitating for a team. It sucks to watch. Everything goes into not being able to hit with runners in scoring position. And the stat was last night that we saw on the broadcast. Don't know how much it's changed in the last day. They're 14th in the AL in runners in scoring position. Johnny, how many teams are in the American League? 15. There's 15 teams in the American League, Avery. Uh, They are second last alone. I believe the Oakland Athletics are ahead of them. Just record? No, like with runners in scoring position. Uh, Okay. I can look that up. It's it's not. It's it's tough to watch. I'm going to be a little bit of like glass half full, but I'm, I'm going to be also a little bit of glass half empty for this episode. Mm. Let, but I, I I did the runners in scoring position numbers. I don't think this counts today. They scored one <laughs> run and like no one was in scoring position. For yes. Run. <clears throat> the Toronto Blue Jays. Oh, no. After. Oh, no. No, not. I don't think they have 235 play appearances with runners in scoring position, but. Their average with runners in scoring position, a whopping 195, 29th in Major League Baseball. Johnny, how many teams are in Major League Baseball? There is 30 teams in Major League Baseball confirmed. Uh, That is is insane. 29th in baseball, dude? Okay. 
and the thing that makes no sense to me, it's just a stat. Guess where they rank strikeout percentage with runners in scoring position? Uh, top 15? They're like bo- bottom. They strike out the seventh least with runners in scoring position. So they're just the pop-out merchants. I mean, they have the lowest batting average on balls in play with runners in scoring position. Are you kidding me? A batting average of balls in play of 235 with runners in scoring position. And I know this isn't the stat about power, but they're the them and the Pittsburgh Pirates are the only two teams under 100 ISO with runners in scoring position. So they are making contact and the ball's not going out of the infield is where I'm reading (laughs) that pretty much. Oh, Uh, man. It's all you can do right now is just kind of sit back and laugh and just be therapeutic with the boys. You have to. It sucks when your manager does it. Like John Schneider coming out. Way to run straight plus a 70 with runners in scoring position. Oh, my God. It's not good enough. No one is going to tell you it's good enough. No one on the team would tell you it's good enough. No one in the front office would tell you it's good enough. And we can't sit here and tell you it's good enough. But if you think, I mean, it could happen over a full year. What am I saying? I don't think it's going to be this bad over a full year. I just, I don't think. Maybe I should add in the next year. Uh, I'll do that at some point later. And just the uh, only highlight from this series was the fans fucking in the outfield pretty much. Uh, on the Corona rooftop, pretty much. Yeah, it wasn't as good as when they were in the 500s a couple of years. Yeah, well, it was a little bit PG. We've uh, we've cleaned it up a little bit here on Sportsnet. I, I it's you uh, can't, you can't win if you don't score runs, guys. We everyone here knows that. <laughs> you, you give you make your pitchers be perfect, and Bassett was close to perfect through five, and then you give up three runs. He's three runs through six, which again is still not bad for Could a pitcher. Give you a really good chance to win a <laughs> baseball game, right? It's uh. There's not really much else to say besides that. It's just, it's, uh, as a fan, it's, it's really tough to watch. And at this point, I'm just saying to the listeners out there, just have some beers with the boys. Or if you don't drink, just sit around, shoot the shit with the fellas. Just have the Jays game on in the background right now. We will let you know when you could feast your eyes back on the Toronto Blue Jays. We will, we will sound the alarm when it's time to watch. Ball. Yeah. We'll sound the alarm when it's time to watch ball. Cause right now it's just background noise. It should be, uh, it should be just background noise. Speaking of um, background noise, we had a little little fill in. Yeah, Ben back. Shulman uh, filled in this week for Dan. Uh, I have a take on it. Yeah, I have a take on it. I think uh, Ben Shulman did a great job. I do think he did a good job. I know some people will disagree with me. Some people will agree with me. What pisses me off is is how he got to that position. And I know that's how the world works. Suck it up. No, 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 no. But I know of millions of broadcasters that could be better, could be worse, I'm not sure, that would never get that chance because their father isn't working for the exact same team. And that sucks. But that's unfortunately how the world works. I think a 23-year-old calling a Major League Baseball broadcast blows my fucking mind, personally. But at the end of the day, he was good. I, I, I... like I, I had no problems. I thought he he added some good things. I yeah. usually don't watch games with the sound on, and when yes. we have sports interaction, we always have the sound on. So that's one of the first times I'd heard it. And then we were at work today, also listening to the sound on. Thought he added added some good points. You're not going to be perfect, man. Um, you can't expect a person to be perfect. And his dad's one of the best broadcasters we've ever heard, who just works for you. The the goat, the Did goat. Sunday night baseball calls college basketball national championships uh and we go we had a pretty good broadcast team every time we get out there so yeah it's just nepotism strikes again the only time nepotism is bad is if it's for a brother like ben verlander who's a waste of a fucking voice in baseball but other than that like i'm fine you know nepotism i guess is fine uh my son will be a nepo product he will start he will our kids will will take over the gate 14 podcast and be nepo products so at the end of the day i could just kind of just smile. Jackson Holiday's an Epo product. His daddy didn't help him hit in the major leagues. Um, it's just, again, if you take a step back and you tell people around baseball that we have a 23-year-old uh, commentating national, like tele- nationally televised games, it just, it's bananas at the end of the day. It really is. 
Um, yeah. And you that's not discounting him. He did a great job. You can't be mad at, at Ben Shulman, the person, for what has happened to him. He's gotten very lucky, and I think he, I think he's talented. So uh, yeah, he's very talented. It's just, uh, it, it's, it's cooler if you got. There's, yeah, there's people who will, who will grind their dicks off for years and and never get that chance. Not and even I a think sub. That's the thing in like big media too, right? You and I are got very lucky starting from nothing and being able to build an audience that's that's done very well. So, I mean, it's hard when you're for a national media company to get in there and do the same thing. Yeah, um, true. Yeah. So, yeah, but at the end of the day, it's like it's like it work. Complaining about who's commentating the game is the least of my concerns right now. I don't even think we'd say we're complaining. Yeah, I'm not really complaining. Just yeah, he got there because of his dad, and I think. The thing is that would piss me off is is guys that won't admit that. Like, if he wouldn't come out and be like, oh, I know I got this because of my dad, I feel like I'd be like, come on, man. Let's have a little bit of feel, you yeah. know? Like, Ben Verlander, who doesn't think, who thinks he got to where he is because not because of his brother, let's you, – you went to the same school as your, your your brother. You got drafted by the same team as your brother, and you now work in national media while your brother's still in the major leagues. Come on. Let's <laughs> let's be a little bit of a realist here. I'd be the first to say it if that was my position. I'd be like, yeah, it's fucking cool having a professional athlete brother. Yeah, it's awesome. Yep. But yeah, those are when it pisses me off. But yeah, don't from home. Uh, going back to don't from home. It's it's done. It's done. Can't do it. Stop don't from home. Say no to dome from home. <laughs> I do not consent. Yeah. yeah, refuse dome from home from now on. Okay, so I, I wanted to go into something else, Avery, because I know. Oh, John, he's switching subjects. He's, he's so unorganized because this came across my phone and I want to talk about this. So Avery Shenye, before the podcast, texted me and said, can you text some of your big league buddies? Not on the Jays. None of these are Jays players, by the way. These are all big leaguers all around the major leagues. Ask them if hitting coaches in the big leagues make a difference. I texted five. Luckily, they all answered rapidly, pretty quick. Five of them said no. That's uh, Five that's of them. Two of them said, I'll read you what one of them said, but I will not, I won't tell you what player it is. Everyone has their hitting guy from home that they talk to. They may tr to try something here or there, but they really don't do shit. That's from a professional baseball player. So for the pitch, like for the people blaming Guillermo, who I love blaming because he's a bum, and the other guys, at the end of the day, it is up to the player. Uh, this this is from the mouths of professional baseball players I have texted. Like, this is not from some Twitter account. I am asking the source. Not on the Blue Jays, obviously, because I do not want to text them right now. Especially about hitting. It is from around the league, guys. So, just to put you in a perspective, the people that are firing the hitting coach, Ross Atkinson hired the good coaches, every single individual player has a hitting guy they work with the entire season and the entire offseason. They are talking to every single day. It's not a... Uh, it's not up to the hitting coach. To f Do you think George Springer is talking to Guillermo Martinez? No fucking chance. I think he's forced into it, probably. Yeah, but he's not like Guillermo's not giving him advice, not giving a World Series MVP advice, not a fucking hit. I that was the answer I thought I was gonna get. Um, it's because you do see it on Twitter. Twitter breaks your brain. Twitter's not a yes. real place. Um, and you see the takes all the time. Fire the hitting coach. You see the hilarious video of the guy last year saying fire Martinez. What is a good hitting coach going to do? I guess maybe small tweaks he sees. Um, pitch selection, game planning for pitchers, I think is probably their best thing that they do. But yeah, it seems like in the offseason, they don't really work with Guillermo Martinez, right? You're working. You're, you think Don Mattingly is texting every single fucking player on this team in the offseason? No, I don't think he is. No, exactly. Like you're going back to your hometown or you're going to the player development thing. I guess those are the closest guys of people who would work with the Blue Jays to fix their swings in the offseason. But you have your swing guy. Aaron Judge went to teacher man for fuck's sakes. Like he <laughs> teacher man is teaching a different swing than any single person in baseball, probably. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, it's getting your feels right, I think, from your guy is how you're successful. It's a feel-based thing. And we go into now. I want to jump a little bit. Like, the pulled fly balls situation. I don't think guys can change their profiles year after year 
to be a ground ball person to just hitting fly balls. It's very hard. Johnny, you played baseball at like college baseball is a decent enough level. I mean, I played baseball as well. At no point were you ever thinking, oh, I'm going to leave this pitch that's probably in the strike zone and down. If you think you can hit it, you're hitting the ball, right? <laughs> yeah. You're not like, this is my thing. It's like everyone's saying, we need to turn so-and-so into a pull fly ball guy, pull fly ball guy. I promise you these hitters are just hitting what pitches are coming at them. If it is in the strike zone, there is a good chance they are hitting it. If you can't elevate a pitch, you're hitting it on the ground. I my thing with that is is like how easy these Twitter these Twitter hitting coaches try to make it sound. It's like Vladdy, get your foot down. Maybe he would maybe maybe it was an OO count. He was taking the entire way. Uh Vladdy, pull the baseball more in the air. You think he's not trying to fucking do that, dude? I'm sure he you, would love to hit 50 home runs again. Do you think Vladdy is openly saying, I want to go with an approach to hit ground balls? Do you think that? No. Like it's just I at, know Twitter the speed pitches come in as well. How can you even think that? Can like, you? No. This is like again, Vladdy with him. It is something with his timing, but he has seemed to figure a six-game hitting streak. He's hitting like 400 his last seven or eight games or whatever it is. He's done fine at the plate. He's he's taking good pitches, making good swings on pitches. He should he looks fine. Like, like the discourse about, oh my God, Kirk has to hit more pull fly balls. You think he's not trying to do that? You think Kirk is swinging at a middle end pitch trying to hit it the other way? No, no, not, there's a reason why the ground ball leaders are very similar year after year because it's it's really hard to do. And pitch <laughs> selection is really hard to change. It is. You have it, done the that, same thing your whole life. You go up there. Your brain tells you if yes. you think you can hit it. It's it just hap your body moves. It's like, oh, OK, like taking pitches in the strike zone seems to be an impossible task because you th you should think you can hit everything in the strike zone right yes like it, you can't you you know your go zones you know your go zones in early early counts like oh oh i'm gonna leave this ball you down have to be and insanely disciplined to leave pitches in the strike zone that you think you can't hit unless it's an oh oh count and you're just trying to get that first pitch strike out of the way that's the only way i kind of see it and like, i think like the thing that clicked for me, I've known this for a while. This isn't a new revelation for me. I'm not saying I'm totally right, but ump cam coming back for the Jays games made me like this point just come to my head. They're just hitting what they think they can hit. And it just happens. Like I don't, if the ball's down low, they're going to put their swing on it. If it goes on the ground. Oh, oh man. Okay. We're just, we're just doing it again. So I, I think hitting, seems a lot easier on Twitter than it is in real life. Well, that's what pissed me off, is you have the guys who have never played a fucking ounce of baseball in their life, ever. Which and okay. You can still have takes. No, that, I know. You can still have takes. You can still have yeah. takes. Yes. But they are bringing up hitting mechanics that they think that they aren't talking about on the big league level. <laughs> yeah. Like, do you think that if Vladdy was, his timing was late, no one's saying that to him? Yeah, or Kirk, oh, but thank God this Kirk, guy said it on Twitter. Yeah, do you think the hitting coaches are seeing Kirk move closer to the plate from from Thomas Hall and say, "I promise oh, you, Kirk, seen that. you need to do that." Like it just the the hitting coaches stuff is. I understand criticizing the team, and I get that, but everyone is a hitting coach now. Like, and it's so it's so annoying, and it's such a toxic part of Twitter that these guys think they could just fix Vladdy. Like, yep, I saw the tweet. Now I'm fixed. And Get my timing like we, down. It's not like we haven't tried our hand at it. Like, you, you no, I, I, I've talked about the timing aspect. I've never said like, oh, my. And what the verbiage I say with it, like, it might be a mechanic thing. It might be a timing thing. I don't know. I'm not a fucking hitting coach. This could have been a different approach. But to post a video of a guy on an OO count or whatever count it was, potentially timing it up when you're not knowing the hitter's thoughts or where the base runners are or anything like that and just saying, yep, timing, that's it. Figured it out. That's Vladdy's problem. Why has no one mentioned this to him? Come on. Come on, dude.
Like, let's be real here for a second. Yeah, still an above league average hitter. Way to run straight up plus wise <laughs> all those years. Yes. So yes, that's, it's that's, frustrating. That's, that's kind it's, of the uh, shit I'm on these days. Is hitting a baseball is insanely hard, and and it's hard for everyone in the big leagues. Like, I'm not. Yes. It's some people are better at it than others, which we know. And, and unfortunately, we got a team full of hitters right now that aren't good at it. <laughs> that's all the only way to the only guy that's good at it is David Schneider, Ernie Clement, and Danny Jansen. And Those Justin the only Turner. Guy. And Justin Turner, sorry. Oh my god, I forgot the king. Um, that's it. And like I, I the team is going through a menstrual cycle together. Uh they are Think slumping as a, as a unit. Uh I think they will figure this out, but I am going to go off of emotions right now and solely say this. If I took a week break from watching this team, I don't think I'd lose a minute of sleep. For example, if if we if we went to bed on if we stopped watching from before last Friday to this Friday against Patrick Corbin, by the way, I swear to God if they don't match Patrick Corbin, uh what would we have missed? Six. <laughs> what? Six runs? Yeah, you know, yeah, six runs. God forbid. <laughs> I, I we got this. We got over the mountain, but I don't know. It's like, uh, it's it's just it's a weird spot to be in as a fan right now because it is. I I get the early aspect, but it's also the offense did this for an entire year before this. Hundred percent. Right. Yeah. Like I can't, I can't tell anyone you're an idiot if you're half panicked about what has gone on. It sucks for everyone involved. Feels like we, we said it all of last year, Avery. Right? Like they'll figure it out, and they never really did. Right? Like you can be unlucky for a full season. Yes, you that can happen. We you don't yes. want it to, but it it's in the cards to be unlucky for a full season. And I don't think they're getting unlucky. Right? I, don't I don't think they are. I just think they're just not putting together good. They're not stringing together at bats together. They and. That's the thing. It is so hard to put together four singles in Major League Baseball. That's why hitting for extra bases is so sought after at this point. Yes, and they they do they struggle with that. I wanted to talk about a guy. Um, we talked about this on Sunday. Uh, George Springer is regressing at an insane amount. I know he struggles in April. I know that's what his player profile is. But I just want to bring up some stuff here with George Springer. His five or his five seasons thus far with the Blue Jays. Okay, uh, first year OPS nine oh seven, great. Second year eight fourteen, a little bit of regression there. Third year seven thirty two, and this year six seventeen, and he's only getting older. Where do you put this guy in the lineup? And I and John Schneider, by the way, saying they're going to pitch in the same way. We talked about it Sunday. Yeah, they're going to pitch in the same, but he's going to get less at bats if he's hitting seven eight or nine. He's gonna hurt. I, he's not he's hitting hurt lead off. Yeah. He's not hitting lead off and getting the most at bats while he's doing this. Where do you put him in the lineup? And where are you at here with George not or with uh George Springer? Sorry. Uh I don't know where I'm at with him. So we can go by monthly weight runs created plus in his career. Okay. 108 is his lowest, and that's the first month. And then okay. his May is traditionally his best month where he's 154. Okay. So if we get a bad May, uh, then you start. Then you hit the panic button. I'm starting to ask. I'm starting to ask some questions for sure. I just don't love him stapled to the top spot. Yes. I think we have some better options at this point. Like David Schneider can turn into a version of George, hitting home runs, uh, getting on base, not running as much as as George would. I think he's. It's not a horrible thing for him to, to kind of look and I think it might help George too being bumped down a little bit like have some pop in the bottom of the order that they don't really well have. it also takes the pressure off him man because like you, you gotta go get on for Vladdy and both just think about this you go up you start every single game and if you punch on three immediately first on the head oh shit like here we go again let him get settled same mental spot yeah I the top three, I would let, I would move around temporarily. It, it doesn't need to be a full long term thing. You're getting poor production to start this season from George and Bo. So yes, I think splitting them up would help them at some point and help the team at some point. Um, yes, I mean if they don't do it, you pray that they figure it out and you have your three best hitters 
uh, you have your three best hitters in the top three spots, getting the most at bats. That makes sense. They're not the three best hitters right now at this. This point. is my and Avery. This is where I'm at. Uh, with this is where I'm at with the leadoff spot. Like this, this is who I think should be leading off. Uh, let me give you. Let me pull some of this stuff up here. Because, uh, like, I think this would benefit the team solely based on the fact that he sees a million pitches when he is at the plate. I think Davis Schneider should be leading off for this team. I really do. Uh, good bat to ball skills, gets deep into counts. Looking at his fan graphs here, twenty five percent walk rate. Uh, he he's a he's a he's a bitch to face. Like he is hard. He is a hard at bat. His way to runs created plus is one twenty eight. He's hitting the ball well. I think David Schneider. I think this team would benefit from David Schneider throwing, maybe potentially throwing him in that leadoff spot. Twenty five percent walk rate. Yeah, that can't be true, right? I have him here. I'm. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Ten, ten, ten. Yeah, I, 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 I read the wrong 10. thing. Yeah, ten. And George is at ten as well. Yes, but like George it, is also his at bats are. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I do think David Schneider would benefit uh, hitting in this leadoff spot for this so team. And he's playing. Is, let's. We can just look at OBP as well. Um, three thirty eight. Davis is three thirty eight. George is two ninety seven. Yes. So again, like Davis Schneider in the leadoff spot with a three thirty eight on base percentage is going to give you more production than George Springer, who's at a two ninety clip for an on base percentage. And and Davis Schneider, we talk about this man. I don't know if there where we could pull the stats up on this to see how many average pitches he sees per at bat, but he gets really really deep into counts. He does. That's just like that's just his mo. And if you look at and here's another thing, Avery, that could sell you on this. Uh, Davis Schneider, similar batters to Davis Schneider in 2023. Kyle Schwarber. That guy leads off. And Davis Schneider is faster than Kyle Schwarber. Yep. It's not It's not a bad idea. It's not. So Justin Turner sees the sixth most pitches per plate appearance. There's in a, baseball? Yes. There's a, there's a real possibility that he could also be the answer there. It's just you got to switch something up at the top of the order. I love George Springer. I do. He was one of the guys, the first big dogs to sign here. I pissed my pants for him, for Christ's sakes. Yeah. But you got to switch it up, man. And 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 John Schneider being stubborn and not switching it up is really what's aggravating me on it. And, and our listeners, I know uh, some people have come up with the idea that uh, our front office makes the lineup. That's not true. That has been debunked. I was listening to a show the other day. Uh, and apparently through multiple sources as well, I've asked all people, uh, the front office provides the stats that they want John Schneider to see. They provide the stats and all the numbers and John Schneider makes a lineup based off of what he thinks. They don't tell him to do this. They don't tell him for the bullpen. They don't tell him who to bring in. They don't tell him the starting pitching stuff anymore. They've been more hands off with, uh, with with the analytics side of it, and they let John Schneider manage. So this is a product of John Schneider just not moving him out of the top spot. Agreed. I'm I'm on board with you there. I think it can be mutually beneficial to move George out for right now. Yes. And yeah, I think there's some Davis or Justin Turner. Justin Turner, I'm less on board with because he is the best guy with runners in scoring position on the team, I believe. Yes. So I don't I don't really want him out of there. Let's yeah. Runners in scoring position. Let's see how they are so far this season. Uh the best player with runners in scoring position. What do you want? Just average wise. Yeah. Justin Turner, Bo Bichette, best with runners in scoring position, both hitting three oh four. Okay. I, I I would love to try. Oh I would God, love to see Vladdy runners in scoring position one thirty three. Yeah, that's not gonna cut it. That's where all these things just intertwine with the each other to not scoring runs. Yeah. I it sucks. Up there pretty good. Yeah. No, there is four players over 250 with runners in scoring position. That's not great. And, I mean, like, and again, yeah. like, it's not, you think these, like, you think these guys don't want to hit runner scoring position? Like, yeah, it's not, I mean. it's not a different, aspect of a game they're hitting at the end of the day like they're getting maybe they're getting pitched too different i'm not sure but it's just an entire team that just can't drive runners in right now and it's 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 very frustrating to watch as a fan it is uh it's very very tough to watch i'm i'm totally on on board with you there what's 
when you watch this team, what like when do you know they're back? What is what is something you desperately want to see from them? Like just change immediately. Obviously, I think, they, can't, they can't necessarily do it, but what's like what do you need? To see? I think getting I think uh getting pitchers out of the games earlier. I mean, we got we got Cole Raggins in the seventh. Uh today Seth Lugo went deep into the game. Like these starting pitchers are going deep into games and minimizing their bullpen use against the Toronto Blue Jays, that's when I'm going to be like, okay, they're a little bit now starting to figure it out at the plate. And I thought they did that in the Yankee series really well. I, yes. I have a thing where I need to see this team run more. I know they don't have a lot of guys who can do it. The small guys, need. we need to be running more. Like, you got to get on base for that, though. 100%. And when, you, <laughs> and when you're not getting on base a lot, uh, you don't necessarily want to take yourself off the base pass but if you just look at stolen bases they've only been caught stealing three times that's the second least in baseball you need to put some hit and runs on we you got to try try and get creative i know how hard it is when i've helped coach and you can't create offense where and hey you swing through a hit and run and got kirk's out by 100 feet as well so i think trying some things on the offensive side there's some good bat to ball guys in the bottom, like Ernie IKF hit and runs. I think you need to you need to kind of tap into that some more, and that goes better when you're hitting. You're 100 percent right with that, but uh, trying to be trying to be a little creative. We need the offensive coordinator to do a little more coordinating. Yes, yes. And did you see the quote with like Ted Williams and him and Don? Yeah. What was from, it? From a long time ago, and. Was it Ted Williams? I think it was. And Ted was like, I, I wanted to make all my outs in the air. Like, I wanted to hit fly balls. And Don Mattingly said he wanted to make all his outs on the ground. And it's just like, yeah, I know. And that's was. that. Little does you know, 30 years later, it's coming. Years, like 40, yeah. yeah, like 40 years later, it's it's doing the same thing. You can't fault a guy for thinking what he wants to think when he's playing. He, Don Mattingly was pretty damn good baseball player in his time. Uh, it's just like, yeah. Things aren't going well hitting the ball on the ground. And then you see Jano just pull everything in the air. Jano rocks, man. Sign that guy to a deal. Oh, my God. Danny Jansen uh, is the epitome of who I wish I was a hitter and who I wish a team had just nine of. Fuck it. I'm pulling everything. I know my strength is pulling baseballs. I'm not even looking the other way. I am going to be... Sitting early on a fastball or being a little bit early on a on a breaking ball because I'm sitting on a fastball and just pulling it. Fuck it. That's where that's what Danny Jansen is. And he is truly such an awesome at bat because he is a power hitter that this team desperately, desperately needs. Yeah. He'd be leading the team in home runs if he played all year. Easily. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I'm just looking. Three caught stealings, 16 stolen bases. But I I also wanted to talk about uh and speaking about some touchy subjects here, man. Two B one has not been good. Uh, I know he's true RGM's guy, and I know he's our guy, but we're seeing right now the bun of the sandwich. He's bad at the start of the year, good in the middle, bad at the end. We're seeing the bun. Kevin Biggio's last fifteen games, he's hitting one fifty four with a two ninety eight on base and a two oh five slugging, sixteen strikeouts and thirty nine at bats. That is what you get when you're a very passive hitter, right? Yeah. Like I said, I said it as a joke in our group chat. Of course, it's like we're gonna we're gonna see the two week stretch where I think Kevin Biggio couldn't start on the high school baseball team. Yes, and which we're is in... obviously not true, but he's passive, taking strike on a three two count, taking strike three where it doesn't look like the bat's ever gonna get off the shoulder. Goes through he goes through these stretches. It's the Kevin Biggio experience. Haven't taken the step up uh, from changing that. We're going to get this from Kevin, maybe limit some playing time in the short term here. I think he'll hit his way out of it at some point, but he was really aggressive. It felt like at the start, I will say I am happy. They have uh, switched that role to Schneider's now Schneider's playing every single day and that that's good for this team. Yeah. You you need to do that when some people are struggling and the top three, you haven't, uh, you don't do that with the top three we have, but uh, those are some good changes that, that are being made. Where do you okay. think Vogelback is? Uh, let's do a uh, over under. 
is Daniel Vogelbach still a Toronto Blue Jay by the All Star break? Gun to your head. I'd say no, probably. I don't think so either. He's doing what he's brought in to do. I don't like. I I just think he's too passive, and when you're not seeing a lot of pitches, and when you're sitting a lot. You got to swing. I mean, he's I know a, that he's in a thankless job as well. Yes. You, you hit once a week and then it doesn't go well. And I was like, why are you even fucking here? It's like, well, I, don't, I don't know. I didn't really get my chance to show why I'm here. I just yes. think he's gone because they they desperately need like Orelvis or someone uh, to bring up or Horowitz is pushing at a point where he's his OPS is 1100. And it's like, OK, we need we need these guys here. So, do you think, do you think uh, Horowitz would be good in this role? I don't think any young guy should ha- so should be subjected to the Daniel Vogelback role that he's yeah, in right now. Yeah, it's a tough role. It isn't. It would do no good. No one I want under the age of twenty eight doing that role right yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> if you're in the minors, it, it, it's a tough role to have where it's like you're hitting in the cage, you're hitting off the machine, but you're not you're not hitting off pitching, yeah, right? I just, like, I just, I just feel like it's probably a good bet that he wouldn't be on the team at that point. I. I don't know why you'd bring anyone else to do what they're making him do right now. Uh, and I can't get mad at him for doing what he is doing right now. He had a double yeah. again. He launched a couple of baseballs in Kansas City last week as well. Like I, He had a double today? Uh, I believe in the ninth inning. Yeah. Okay. They, and then they took him out. Okay. Yeah. It, it just, it, it sucks for Vogie because it's a tough spot for him to be in. Like, 100%. It's a tough spot for him to be in. I'm not going to fault or blame Vogelback for this team's offensive struggles. I'd be stupid. That, that, yeah, you can't have the guy with the least plate appearances to blame for. Yeah, I, yeah, that, that's a good point. And speaking about AAA and Buffalo and all that, we got to talk about a bright spot. Alec Manoa. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I mean, night and day compared to what we have saw. You and I were watching the game. I watched the first four innings, I want to say. Uh, the fat the sinker was up there, ninety four, ninety five. They were calling it. Is it a sinker? I'm assuming it's a sinker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, striking guys out. The slider was the White Castle special, for, as pitching ninja tabs it. Uh, he went toe to toe with Paul Skeens and literally went toe to toe with him in the game. Uh, I think he pitches for this team within the next ten days. I really do. Yeah. So, if you don't know, why Rod back issue again? That fuck two of the same injury to start the season. Yeah. That's not good at all. And he, and he got it diving for the ball back up the middle. So why rod on the 15 day IL, they were saying Paulo Espino could be the one. No. To come. Well, did you see what happened today? His line? Yeah. He's, he gave up, uh, he pitched one inning, gave six up six runs. I think he went one and two thirds, gave up eight runs or something like that. Yeah. Against you, the same you can't team. Bring, Paulo Espino cannot be the one coming up before Alec Manoa. And he's no. on, He's on a timer as of next Monday or this Monday as to what to do with him. I believe this Monday. Okay. Because it's 30 days. Sorry, it might be next because the AAA season starts a little bit later, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So depending on when he went on his rehab stint, 30 days, I believe. Yes. I also think he's coming back. There is a ton of off days. They have three off days in the next seven. Yeah. So they have tomorrow off, next Thursday off, and this Monday off. Uh, you Again, can, you can line this up as a four-man rotation, pretty easily. For- yeah, I, and the thing is, they they kind of have a soft spot in the schedule coming up here a little bit. I mean, the Phillies are two, great. In two weeks, it starts the soft. Yes, spot. I think Manoa starts against the White Sox. Maybe right gets okay. gets his feet wet. Probably, I would say I, he starts he'd, against. He'd have to be up before then, I believe. Yeah, yeah, but I think he starts against the White Sox. You desperately need him. All the pitching depth that they had, it's gone. Pitching- is not available anymore. Well, Mitch that is start gone. against Indy was a major league pressure start, I believe. And I think he probably knew that as well. And he came out and he pitched that well. The depth on the slider was insane. Maybe it was just the view we had that can change in my minor league parks. The depth on the slider looked insane. He looked really good uh, getting ahead. Every single time he missed a fastball, he does the two hand thing where he Says he should be straight down the mound, like yeah. His body working he looked downhill. vintage. Looked like vintage him. I know it's AAA pitching, obvious or hitting, obviously. Hundred percent. And the Pirates AAA team isn't a team to write home about. It's not the Norfolk Tides we're talking about here. But that's a team that also shelled Paulo Espino. So <laughs> it's like 
he's a better option than Paulo Espino. I'm not. That's not a hot take. That is not a hot take. I think yeah. he's. I think he's up soon. That was really, really good to see because we didn't get a good start before. Do you think he makes another game. start in Triple I? Oh, I need. I need to just look at the schedule and what where they need him. Um, because he would go because he pitched Tuesday, right? He would go on Sunday, which is before his clock runs out. I think he pitches another game. And if that's promising, then I might have to because start like, using the viewer. You, you have Thursday off and Monday off. That's already two. Then you can push to a two game series uh, with another day off. Like everything's working out well for him to pitch Sunday and then be ready, like the Friday after twins at home, maybe. Yeah. Is an Alec Manoa thing. I don't know how well that lines up, uh, but, <laughs> but that, that might be the one where we get, we get him back. Yeah. I can agree with that. I can agree with that. But I wanted to talk about the war against six runs. That's the name of this podcast. It's over. We conquered it, but at what cost? We did not. I don't feel like we conquered it anymore. Back to back, one runs. It might as well not have happened. I wish we could cheer for six again. Yeah. Getting six runs on Monday, one awesome tweets. Just some of the most fun I'd had tweeting about something in my whole life. Just waking up. What are you going to do to score six runs today? That yes. was a lot of fun. And then just back to back ones. You get Cole Reagans, you get beat by Cole Reagans, who is a fantastic arm. That's fine. I that's that's getting beat. Seth Lugo's been really good as well. Thought there's some better opportunities to score runs there. Uh felt like we never did it. Thought we sold our souls for six runs in. We didn't get to see it again. We unfortunately so, did. Temporarily the war was over, but we are back on the front lines, brother. World War II has begun. If can't do it against Patrick Corbin, I don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, uh, let's go on. To, let's go on to the news, uh, the announcement. Uh, highly anticipated. We get DMs about this all the time. We have introduced a new segment, Gate 14 After Dark. I know all you listeners out there, all you guys want to be a part of the brand, uh, a part of the Gate 14 way. This is the best way to do it. We will be doing a Twitter Twitter space every Wednesday or Thursday before we record. Uh, taking in callers like a certain show they do on Fan 590, but is going to be uncensored, respectfully. You can swear. It's it's censored. If you say fuck stuff, you're not going to. Yeah, yeah. If you say if you say fuck stuff, you're not going to be in it, but you can swear. It's not yeah. like a, it's like PG-13. Is that the best way to say it? Can you swear when you're 13? I'm not sure. Okay, you can uh, swear, but. So we will be doing that. And if you miss it, we will be recording it and putting it at the end of every podcast during the week. We're trying to adapt here. We're trying to get better and uh, uh, create more reactionary content for the people, which will be funny clips of us reacting. We'll post clips on the socials about these calls we get because we're going to have cameras on us while we're taking these calls. Uh, it'll be funny stuff. Gate 14 after dark. Uh, you call in, throw your take, you say your question, and then you're gone. That's it. No conversation. No. No conversation. That's it. And it'll be a lot... We would do the conversation. I need to be able to edit edit it easily, and that yes, that would that's help the, me. That's the easiest way to edit it. So, yeah. uh, let it fly. Uh, let us know what you guys think. The first one will be next Wednesday night because they have the Thursday off. We'll be recording that. Going from there against the Phillies, and if things are bad, it'll be some electric takes flying off the roof here that we can react to. So, uh, I cannot wait for that. So, stay tuned for that. And uh, I guess we can go into the weekend series now. I mean, we kind of knocked down everything here. Um, right. Uh, weekend series Friday. We talked about this earlier. We alluded to this earlier. Credit me for the big word. <laughs> Patrick Corbin bumped day. One of the worst pitchers in the game today. 682 ERA. He is 0 3. We got to mash this dude. We have to mash this dude, Avery. Yeah. Like n no excuses. Friday is as must win as they come. I might throw the must win tab on it. I, I just did it. I did it. Okay. Yeah. Must win. Friday's a must win. Uh, Saturday, which is a special day to most, a national holiday, as some would say. Johnny yeah. Junta's birthday. Kevin Gossman bump day. Again, I don't know. They don't know who the, who's pitching for the uh, Nationals that day, but Kevin Gossman's going Saturday and Sunday, according to Ben Nicholson, my king, is to be announced, but he said Blue Jays need a starting pitcher. Alec Manoa's rehab window about to end, and Manoa just put together his best triple play start of the – 
Okay, so Manoa might go Sunday. Okay, that would make sense. That, okay. that would mean his window might be up Monday, and I'm just I'm just off. Okay, yeah. So Sunday, so Sunday we might be seeing Alec Manoa versus the Nationals. So we got so Kikuchi Gossman pitcher that day. Anyone? They haven't announced it. Okay, I think we get to miss Mackenzie Gore, which is good. Yes, yes. So two one series win. I think that loss would be uh, detrimental to Blue Jays Twitter if they lose one of these games. Safe to say, the Nats are doing some good things. They are. They look fine. I mean, they Jesse Winkers look great. CJ Abrams rocks. Superstar. That dude, that dude's a superstar. Uh leading the team in home runs. He'd be leading the Jays in home runs, actually. So uh shortstop freak of nature. Uh, like I said, Jesse Winker's been good. This is you gotta take two or three here, man. You gotta. Yeah. Unacceptable not to. These are some of the soft parts that you need to you need to take advantage of. Not that the Nats are the worst team in the world, but you, you need to win two of three. Uh, yeah, and then, folks, we're getting close to that soft spot. We got White Sox, Tigers, White Sox, Pirates. Like, now we got to go. Now we got to go. We got to start stringing together wins. Uh, and fans, just to think, this team was 500 in 2022 and made the playoffs, okay? Let's just... I know it sucks to watch right now. You can be reactionary. You could chirp all you want, say this team sucks, all that. I get it. You can do that. But, again... We can turn some of this shit around here, and it starts this weekend at National Park in Washington. Six forty start Friday, by the way. What Apple the fuck? TV, right? Yeah. Ugh. Oh my god. Strike. You know. Oh, you don't like seeing the strikeout probability in the top. <laughs> yeah, get ready uh, to right learn hit probability, buddy. Yeah, get ready to learn uh, hit probability. So we'll be watching that. Uh, everyone, have a great week. Anything else, Avery, for the people? I mean, this is. Uh, I think we we're fair. This podcast, we were. We we're fair. Long. Long year wasn't a fun homestand. Uh, both can be true. Two and six or two and four on the homestand. Not going to do it. Nope. Not good at all. But we got to bounce back. We got to bounce back. That's all that matters. Got to turn this around. We will see you guys later. Make sure you guys download Sports Interaction and uh, let's have ourselves a weekend. Let's enjoy the weekend. The weather, the weather is starting to get beautiful. Today was nice. Today was beautiful. And uh, we will see you guys Sunday night. Uh, before the Philly series. Hopefully the vibes are a little bit better. Love you guys. Gate 14 forever. Let's have ourselves a weekend.